Utagawa Hiroshige's 53 Stations of the Tokaido is an extraordinary example of Japanese high art during the Tokugawa or Edo period, an era of Japanese history that lasted from 1603 to 1868 AD. Through his series of 55 ukiyo-e woodblock prints, Hiroshige encapsulates some of the most beautiful scenery of the eastern seacoast of Honshu. Drawing on imagination and realism, the work memorialized and disseminated ideas of Edo period aesthetic, literature, commerce, and governance throughout the empire and the world. This video essay will analyze 53 stations of the Tokaido in four parts. First, I will introduce the invention and popularization of the painting and printing genre ukiyo-e. Next, this video essay will examine how Hiroshige's 53 stations of the Tokaido is representative of its period in history, including discussion of domestic policy and the purpose of the Tokaido Road, as well as its relationship to a rising consumer class and material culture. Finally, parts three and four will note the various ways in which Hiroshige's series show early indications of Western influence, while on the flip side, also considering the degree to which the artists in the ukiyo genre in general influenced generations of Western artists. During the Warring States period, from 1467 to 1615, Japan was divided and ruled by powerful regional feudal lords, or daimyo, whose military ambitions and ever-changing alliances led to continuous civil war. It was only after the rise of the of Tokugawa Yesu in 1603 and the establishment of Edo, or modern-day Tokyo, as the seat of the Japanese shogunate, that Japan was to be united. Though nominally appointed by the emperor, the shogun would act as a de facto ruler of the country. Fearing insurrection, Tokugawa Yesu implemented a system of alternative attendance, or sunken kotai, which required daimyo to reside in Edo and to return to their home provinces every other year to maintain local control. During their absence, the daimyo's family was to remain in Edo as a guarantee that they would not attack the city. In order to house their families and their many thousands of attendants, the daimyo constructed compounds in the capital city, which were considered their own autonomous domains. Following this large influx to the capital, merchants, craftsmen, and townspeople began to populate the city. In fact, by the early 19th century, Edo had become one of the largest cities in the world with an estimated population of 1 million inhabitants. It was out of this bustling urban environment that ukiyo-e arose. The name ukiyo-e draws upon a Buddhist metaphor that describes a transient world of fleeting pleasures, in which all physical and mental events ultimately cease to exist. In the Edo period, the masses reinvented this phrase, substituting to float for its homonym meaning transitory, to express an attitude of celebration. Seeking to control public behavior, the Tokugawa shogunate combined all theaters, tea houses, and brothels to certain parts of the city, the most famous of which was Yoshiwara district. Here, daimyo and warriors mixed with newly rich townspeople such as merchants and artisans and pleasure and entertainment. Artists, inspired by the general public, took to painting images of urban life that appealed to contemporary masses. Their work glorified the world of the entertainment quarter, depicting tea ceremonies, erotic scenes of courtesans, well-known kabuki performances, famous geishas, and sumo wrestling bouts. Ukiyo-e can take the form of painted folding screens, but its most popular medium is a woodblock print. While the earliest examples of ukiyo-e made during the 17th century were simple and monochrome, artists such as Ukamura Masanobu soon took to using two colors. By 1765, vibrant polychrome prints using numerous blocks were introduced by Suzuki Haranobu. These woodblocks were reusable and lent themselves to a booming commercial enterprise of inexpensive artworks, primarily used by the merchant class for decorations, but also serving as souvenirs bought by visitors to the city. Ukiyo-e prints often featured detailed surroundings. Similar to in Western art, a new style of landscape painting emerged from these backgrounds. In these landscape paintings, we see a slight reintroduction of the original meaning of ukiyo-e, whereby the artist conveys the ephemeral beauty and essence of nature. Two masters, Katsushika Hokusai and Utagawa Hiroshige, perfected the landscape ukiyo-e as its own subgenre. These artists' great landscapes, such as Hakusai's Great Wave of Kanagawa, or Hiroshige's 53 Stations of the Tokaido, captured and popularized Japanese scenic places and landmarks that to this day still serve as a Japanese source of national identity. The subject matter of Hiroshige's 53 Stations of the Tokaido is particularly representative of the Tokugawa period. Tokugawa Iesu began construction of the Gokaido, or Five Routes, sometimes called the Five Highways, in order to strengthen the control of the central shogunate administration over the whole country. The road facilitated communication across the country, movement of military troops, and contributed to the daimyo's adherence to the system of alternative attendance. The Tokaido, or the Eastern Highway, is the most important of five roads as it connected Edo with Kyoto, and also served the purpose of bringing offerings to the emperor. In fact, it was in 1832, when accompanying an official delegation of the shogun on its way to the imperial court in Kyoto, that Hiroshigo etched these famous prints. In order to serve its purpose, the Tokaido was well organized and maintained. Its 53 post stations provided a place for travelers to find rest, food, and water for themselves and their horses. Tokaido was also necessary for the commercial traffic of goods and merchandise. At each station, there could be found local handcrafts and souvenirs. Each of the 53 official post stations had its own character. Hiroshige adeptly incorporated these features into his prints, making them part of the Tokaido legend. 
While trade between Japan and the West would not be normalized until 1853, Hiroshige's 53 stations of the Takedo provide some evidence of a pre-existing relationship, which can be traced primarily through the West's influence on the material and technique used for his series. Trade records show that Prussian blue, a blue pigment invented in Europe in the 18th century, had reached Nagasaki's ports by Dutch and Chinese merchants by as early as the 1820s. The Prussian blue pigment was superior to his indigo predecessor in that it presented a wide range of tones and more resistance to fading. By the end of the decade, Prussian blue was being commercially imported and was becoming increasingly sought out by Japanese artists who wished to depict deep water, oceans, rivers, and blue skies. Prussian blue can be found in many of Hiroshige's prints, but especially in the seascapes that are so prominent in his 53 stations of the Takedo. Hiroshige's reception of Western influence can further be seen in his introduction of perspective and foreshortening in his prints, whereby he portrays characters in the foreground as larger than those in the background. Though Western culture and innovation influenced Japanese art a considerable amount, it is important to recognize that there was actually a mutual exchange of ideas. After trade had been established between Japan and the West, the French became increasingly interested in Japan's material culture. Japanese decorations, such as porcelain, screens, fans, and lanterns, could be found in the households of many wealthy French families. In the 1870s, the term Japanisma had been coined to describe the influence of Japanese culture on the West. Many artists also took an interest in Japan. In particular, Hiroshige's bright colors and attention to the passing of time had a strong impact on Impressionist and Post-Impressionist painters. Notable artists like Monet and Van Gogh themselves collected ukiyo-e. Van Gogh, who was especially inspired by ukiyo-e, modeled his bridge in the rain after Hiroshige's sudden shower over Shin Ohashi Bridge in the Taki. He would write to family members about his belief in Japan being something of a paradise for painters, and how, when painting, he would close his eyes to imagine he was in Japan. By this time, however, the Japan of Van Gogh's imagination, or that of Hiroshige's woodblock prints for that matter, had already begun to disappear. The Meiji Restoration of 1868, an increased Western presence, had shaped Japan into an industrialized world power. The first train systems were built in the 1870s, and these soon would come to replace the Takedo. Simultaneously, there was a steep decline in ukiyo-e woodblock printings as other art forms took its place. In summary, Hiroshige's 53 stations of the Takedo is representative of the pivotal point in Japanese history, at the dawn of a new age of globalization. His woodblock prints captured the complexities of this transformation as national subject matter, such as the Takedo, meshes with instances of Western pigments and technique. His international success furthermore serves as an early testament to the strong presence that Japan would come to hold on the global stage.